things a lot easier. I mean, we could paint the room, buy clothes. I don't want to know. Why not? We know everything these days. There's absolutely nothing that we can't just look up on the internet. You can't look up whether you're going to have a boy or a girl. Right now, I could look up the square root of seven or any other number. I don't even know what a square root is, really. I certainly wouldn't know how to calculate it, but I can just look it up and know the answer. But I don't really know it. I mean, I know the answer, but I don't know what it means. I could look up how many babies are born every minute, every second, but what does it mean? I don't know. You see, I have no idea. It could be one, it could be 10. Actually, it's closer to four per second, 4.3 to be precise. You can't have 4.3 babies. It's a statistical expression. It's either a whole baby or it's not a baby. <sighs> Ours will be a whole baby. But statistically, it could be the point three. I should have gone over with the cake or something when they moved in. I don't know. Is that old fashioned? Do people do that anymore? How do you see me? I thought you didn't care. No, no, I don't. Just curious, that's all. I just think that sometimes you can be a bit... A bit what? Dismissive. <sighs> Nonsense. I mean... I just happen to be well informed about the world around me, and I apply that knowledge to situations of everyday life. How else can I separate truth from falsehood and reasonable from unreasonable beliefs? Some people might think your beliefs are unreasonable. How was work? I didn't go to work. Didn't they mind? Who? Work. You can't just take a day off, can you, for no particular reason? I told them you were ill. Why don't you tell them you were ill? I'm not ill. Neither am I. Well, we're both healthy. We can be thankful for that, at least. Do you like it? I like a blue dress. Yes, but do you like this one? I think the blue one's perfectly adequate. You haven't even looked at it. What do you mean, at least? You said we're both healthy. We can be thankful for that, at least. He seems very nice, the neighbor. He's married. They're young. New, like shiny pennies, never been spent. Anyway, I've invited them over. I don't think that's a good idea. He was very insistent. When are they coming? The doorbell rings. That'll be them. Shall I get it, or will you? I'm glad I'm not a turtle. Imagine having to weep over all those dead baby turtles. Yes. Imagine. But then, turtles don't weep, do they? Only people do that. Except the mock turtle. And Alice. He cried, if I remember. Did he? Yes. He was sad because he was made up of all of these different bits of animals. Things that suggested a turtle, but weren't really. He cried because he wasn't real. Yes. And we cry because we are. Yes. I suppose. Oh, it kicked. Feel it. Oh, go on. It's okay. I don't mind. We should have had another. Sort of an act of faith, don't you think? Having a child. What is it exactly that you have faith in? Small things. Tiny things. The division of cells. 
things so minute they're not visible to the naked eye, not even visible with the most powerful magnification. Things that you can only perceive in the movement of things around them, like the wind, time. The baby died next door. I told her they're a worry, children. I did tell her. Is this a cat or a dog? Hard to say. Doesn't really matter now, anyway. It's the umbilical cord, you know? One in one in two hundred. Less than one percent. I mean, statistically speaking, very, very unlikely. Very unlikely. Oh, Charlotte. Sitting at home gestating a dead baby. That's a bit gruesome. It's all a bit fucking gruesome, isn't it? How's your good wife? Keeping well, is she? What do I do? I don't know. Go home and make her a cup of tea. God, I feel like shit. Yes. It's like having an extra leg or something attached to part of your body where it doesn't do you any good. Like sticking out of your back and the top of your head. It's always there. Just this thing. I'm sorry about your radishes. I really am. So this guy, this greasy Hummer driver, egomaniac, holds our Grant Renew in his hands. He doesn't sound like the right audience for a grant to measure the rate of ice flow on outlet glaciers. You think? You'll handle it. I'm not staying. Just for a few more days? We agreed. I know, but we need this funding. I can't be here. I told you, I need to go home. I ditched the guy. He probably hates me. You can't leave me here alone with him. A couple of days, three days at most. Please? You aren't listening. I can't do this right now. As charming as he sounds. Roger. Early morning copter ride to Broadmoor Glacier in Alaska. Hashtag epic life. Hashtag day one. So, oh, you work for Exxon? What's your position? Um, Nate said someone high up might mean that our grant renewal was getting traction. You're intense. You're not high up, are you? I freelance for a PR firm. Exxon is a client. I know freelance sounds like I'm not legit, but it actually means that I cost too much for any one company to put on salary. So Land Rover or Tag or Canon, and I have freelance for all those companies, hires me for expedition photography of my off the grid, adventure seeking, sexy as hell epic life. I lend them my brand and I Instagram photos of their products being used in gorgeous ways. So no, I'm not a VP. I am an influencer. I have a massive following. Okay. I'll make your save the date inspirational green hippie thing go viral. I'm not a hippie. I'm a scientist. 
Yeah. All right. Right. Okay. So if you look at this chart, you can see the progress of the glacier from 1900 to 2000 is around the same as the distance from the last 10 years. Yeah. You're not looking. I see it. Look. Roger stops what he's doing and looks. It's not what he expected. Wait, what's this? Oh, wait, uh, That's... Oh, don't look at that. Uh, that's my personal data. She clicks a new slide, but it's still not the right one. I, I'm, my data sets must have gotten mixed up. Your personal data? Of what? Zoe slams a laptop shut. Nothing? It said ovulation chart. Right. I seem to be pregnant. Really? Congrats. A spectacular first day. My kick-ass North Face tent on Broadmoor Glacier. Epic night of stories around a campfire with glaciologists Zoe and Nate. Hashtag bleeding hearts. Hashtag saving the world. Hashtag epic life. Day two. Early morning adventure on Broadmoor Glacier with Nate hiking over gnarly ice that's actually floating on the sea. Hashtag below the flow line. Hashtag epic life. Hashtag Live in the dream. Oh my God. Do you ever shut up? The endless bragging, I swear, makes my skin crawl. I mean, is any of it even true? No amount of money is worth hearing you go about how you're the only one on earth who could get some image. It's bullshit. Me. You brag about all the ways you've escaped death. Finding a seal, sunbathing on an iceberg, barely leaping to safety before the ice cracked beneath your feet. At least my stories are true. I'm not the one making up shit about sleeping on the side of El Capitan, using one nut to hold a portage during an epic storm. That happened. I have photos. Wait, wait just a minute. I do remember you. What? Portage Glacier. No. I told you that El Capitan story and you snorted in disbelief. So you ditched me in this like seedy hotel in the middle of nowhere. It wasn't seedy. It was you. <laughs> I waited. Zoe, I'm fine. Well, I trashed my leg, which you use as evidence of my inability to be a father. But I want to say this now, when you're not looking at me. I know I won't be a typical dad. We're different. And that makes a good thing. Maybe we need each other to find balance. The thing is about the seals is even though they're dying out and the ice is shrinking and their habitat is unsustainable, they live and they play. I get the reality of the place we're living in, of the climate change and its consequences. I see it like you do, but I don't want to live in fear. Hello? But I still feel it. Everything. I return to the bridge, every bridge where I think it all happened, to find the crash, to find something. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Help me. Time, changing speeds here and there, passes. The wind dances through. The wolf howls. Along with the wind, perhaps reaching the ocean, lengthening the tides. Radio. 
Good morning. Good morning, class. Uh, hello. I, uh, class today will, uh, um, I am a specialist in holographic theory as a method for understanding human construction of the universe. A phone rings. Excuse me. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry. I, uh, uh, this psychologist was wrong. The rats proved him wrong. Because if it's true that our brains are bookshelves, then wouldn't it be possible to remove knowledge and memories from the mind just by removing some of the books in the brain? Makes sense. So in 1946, this psychologist removed some books and shelves from the rats. But the rats were smarter than the psychologist because the rats still knew the maze. The psychologist repeatedly tried to stump them, experimenting with removing different parts of their brain, different books and different shelves, trying to find the specific location where the memory of the maze was stored in the rat's minds. But he couldn't do it. Because the brain is not a book of shelves or a filing cabinet, not even in a mouse. Because the brain, like everything else, is a hologram. Everything is one thing. Everything is in everything, and it's all part of the whole big, the big one thing. Do any of you believe this? Raise your hand if you believe this. Interesting. Take a hand. Uh, that one. Oh, well. What's in the other one? A lady tried to give me her kid one. I work in a restaurant. I'm a waitress. Okay. She had twins. So she only needed one. She thought it would be interesting to split them up. Let them live their own lives. There was a big fire that night. Did you take the twins? Lucy? I should have. <clears throat> Next night, the lady came back with only one of them. The normal looking one. She seemed happy. Hmm. Do you want to play a game? Pick a hand. No. That's a lot full time. It's similar to a ponderosa, but it has a slimmer trunk. See its cone? That's a Douglas fir. Its genus is named it's Pseudotsuga, but it's a false fir. It's actually a pine tree. Sometimes people call them pisses. Like pisses and pee? <laughs> yes. Why? The aroma of their needles, and also their sap is very voluminous. If you cut one open, it smells like that. These might be my favorite, the quaking aspen. Look at the color and integrity of their trunk, the white bark. Look how tall some of them are. I admire that. 
and its colors. When the seasons change, the leaves become really vibrant yellows and reds. The leaves are an explosion of beautiful colors before they fall to the ground. And the sound, listen. Why are you here? Mom. Mom has probably asked you to check on me for months, right? So. What do you want? Because it's not to help me make you over. Oh, when did you get so angry? I came to retain your services. What do you do now? Nothing. It wasn't even my fault. You said you quit drinking. Maybe you should do that mind trick thing. Pretend water is whiskey and stop being a drunk. This woman started a fight with me. I think we both know that you did something to provoke her. Fine. Don't believe me. I'll hire a lawyer who doesn't judge me. Fine. Fine. Good. Good. <laughs> wow, so you think you deserve healing more than me. I told you I'm not perfect. <sighs> no shit. That's awful. Yeah. It's a relief to finally say it. I'm gonna go. Don't go. I don't hate you. Not really. Not all the time. <laughs> <laughs>